Okay, my talk is about PDE constraint shape optimization uh, as optimization on shape manifolds. It is a joint work with uh, Volker Schulz, my supervisor, and Martin Siebenborn. First, I will give a brief introduction in which I present the PDE constraint shape optimization problem and uh, the questions uh, which arise out of it. Um, then I explain how we can solve such a PDE constraint shape optimization problem, and I uh, present two approaches, a Lagrange-Newton approach and a quasi-Newton approach. In the following, we want to minimize the real value shape differential by objective function with respect to shape. This minimization problem is constrained by a PDE. Uh, in this talk, we consider uh, 2D shapes, that means uh, simply connected and compact subsets of the plane with smooth boundary. Now we can ask, how is the set of all these shapes defined? The answer to this question uh, gave uh, Michur and Mumford. They defined the space of all 2D shapes as the set of all equivalence classes of embeddings of uh, the uh, unit circle into the plane where the equivalence relation is defined by the set of all different morphisms of the uh, unit circle into itself. Here you can see uh, two shapes. This shape lies in uh, this shape space and this one don't. Uh, this definition uh, could be extended uh, to, uh, to higher dimensions. Here you can see two shapes. This one uh, would lie in this shape space here, BE for S2 and uh, R, uh, yeah. <laughs> and this one don't lie in it. Um, now we work with this shape space. Um, Michel and Mumford showed also that this shape space together with the Sobolev metric defined by this mapping G1 is a Riemannian manifold if our metric parameter H is larger than zero. Uh, here um, H and K denotes two elements from the tangent space. This is isomorphic to this set here. Um, and this symbol here denotes the laplace beltrami operator. Now we use the Sobolev metric to build the Riemannian shape gradient. The Riemannian shape derivative is uh, given uh, as this uh, boundary integral here. Then our Riemannian shape gradient is given as the normal vector of Qn we are to use the solution of this equation here. This equation arises out of the definition of our Sobolev metric G1. Um, now uh, we want to solve our minimization problem. Uh, one approach to solve such a PDE constraint shape optimization problem is to consider um, the necessary first order optimality conditions given by this equation star here. L denotes the Lagrangian two hour minimization problem. Now we can solve these uh, necessary first order optimality conditions by applying a Newton method or a quasi Newton method. The difference between this, uh, these two methods is that we use in each iteration of the Newton method the Hessian and in each iteration of the quasi Newton method an uh, approximation of it. Now we get to the first part of the talk the Lagrange-Newton approach. I want to illustrate it uh, by an interface problem. We have a domain uh, which is equal to the open unit square, and this domain is split into two subdomains, such that there is an interface, as illustrated here. This interface is an element of this set. This set is built in the same analogy to our shape space BE. The only difference is that we fix these two endpoints here. Now we want to minimize an objective function j of tracking type with parameter regularization. This minimization problem is constrained by a, a Poisson equation with Dirichlet condition and uh, our uh, right side of the Poisson equation has a jumping coefficient. Now we formulate explicitly the continuities of the state and the flux at our interface given by these two equations here. Uh, the bracket here denotes the discontinuity across our interface. 
Now we can build the Lagrangian to our minimization problem. It, it consists of our objective function, our bilinear form, and our linear form here of our PDE constraint. Here, joint problem is also a Poisson equation with um, Dirichli boundary conditions and our two interface conditions here. The shape derivative is given by this interface integral here. The second term arises out of our parameter regularization. Um, the calculation of the shape derivative is very technical. We achieve it by, an, uh, by applying the theorem of Correa and Sega and evaluate the shape derivative of the Lagrangian in its subtle point. Now you can see here our necessary first order optimality conditions and we apply now a Newton method to it. That means that we have to compute the increment as the solution of this equation star here. From a practical point of view, it is easier to solve this equation star in a weak formulation. That means that these conditions here, or equations, has to be solved for all tangential vectors h. Now we make use of a key observation of, uh, in the publication of Volker Schulz. He showed that the term h to 2 is symmetric in the solution of our optimization problem. That motivates a Riemannian SQP method. Now we want to have a look on this term h22. If we replace uh, this term h22 by an approximation such that this appro uh, approximation omits all terms in h22 which are zero at the solution and the reduced Hessian we built with this appro approximation is aggressive, then our equation star is equivalent to this QP here. Now we look uh, on the QP for our uh, Poisson uh, problem. Um, the QP consists uh, induced, but is not limited to, to our approximation of H to 2 given by this blue term, our shape derivative given by this red integral here, and then it um, has the terms H11, which is equal to set square, H12, which is equal to zero, and this der derivative, which is given by the boundary integral of uh, the domain integral of this term here. The PDE constraint is given by this equation here with two interface conditions and then the Richelieu condition. The adjoint problem to uh, our QP is given by this e um, Poisson equation with the Richelieu boundary condition, and the design equation is given by this equation here. Now this QP is solved by a CG iteration for the um, reduced problem. That means for the design equation. So we have to compute in each iteration uh, the state variable Z from our QP, then the adjoint variable Q from the adjoint equation, and the, residuum, the resi residual from uh, the design equation. Here you can see our whole algorithm. We first evaluate the measurements, then we solve our adjoint PDE, then we solve our QP, and then we can solve the linear elasticity equation and deform the mesh. In our implementation, we set the coefficient, which is valid in omega 1, equal to uh, 1,000, and the other one equal to 1. The parameter regularization was weighted by a factor of 10. The data y bar was generated from a solution of the state equation where our optimal solution was a straight line connection of our two fixed endpoints. And the starting point of the iteration was described by this B spline here. Because our optimal solution was a straight line connection, we can measure the distance of each shape to our optimal solution by this integral here. On the next slide, you can see our numerical results. We built an unstructured grid with about 6,000 triangles. Then we perform also computations on uh, uniformly refined grids with 24,000 triangles and 98,000 triangles. And this table gives the um, distance of each shape to the optimal solution. 
and you can see that we could observe quadratic convergence rates on the finest grid. Now we get to the second part of this talk, the quasi-Newton approach. I want to illustrate it by a diffusion process. This diffusion process was motivated by the question how the absorption of the uh, medical scream into the human skin is. So you can think that you put scream, uh, cream on the top of uh, the domain, and so we have a higher concentration there in the beginning. The domain consists of two materials with different permeability, and one human skin cell is represented by this interior domain here. Our human skin cell has a variable boundary, which is our interface. And this interface is, uh, is an element of our shape space, BE. That means we want to minimize an objective function um, of tracking type with parameter regularization, and our PDE constraint is given by a parabolic diffusion equation with a jumping coefficient k. Um, then we have uh, a Neumann boundary condition on the bottom left and right of our outer boundary, a Dirichlet condition on the top of our outer boundary, and then initial condition. Moreover, we formulate explicitly the continuity of the state and the flux at our interface. The adjoint equation to this um, parabolic diffusion problem is also a parabolic diffusion problem with jumping coefficient k. Then we have also a Neumann boundary condition and the Dirichlet boundary condition, two interface conditions, and here we have two, um, two adjoint variables, but they don't play a very important role in the following. Very important is the shape derivative. The shape derivative um, sometimes arises in two forms. It could be expressed as an integral over the domain or an integral over the boundary. In our case, if we consider uh, the objective function without parameter regularization, the shape derivative over the um, domain is given by this domain integral here, and the shape derivative expressed as boundary is given by this interface integral here. This integral here arises out of our parameter regularization. Now we can use our uh, shape derivative to solve our PDE constraint shape optimization problem. As already mentioned, we want to solve our necessary first order um, optimality conditions by applying a quasi-Newton method. That means that we need in each, uh, each iteration an approximation of our shape Hessian. Um, such an approximation um, is, for example, uh, re realized by a limited memory BFGS method. Uh, in our case, um, we have to formulate a limited memory BFGS method on our um, Riemannian um, shape manifold BE. The difference between um, the standard limited BFGS uh, method and our Riemannian one is that we use the Zobolev metric G1, a Riemannian shape gradient, and um, a vector transport. In our implementation, the final time of simulation was 20. The metric parameter was equal to 0 0.001. And the coefficient, which uh, is valid in the interior domain, was equal to 0 0.001, and the other one equal to 1. And the parameter regularization was weighted by a factor of 0 0.0001. The data y bar was generated from a solution of the state equation where our interior domain was a circle with radius a half. And here you can see our initial domain.
On this slide, you can see our numerical results. The left figure shows our initial and our target domain, and the shapes between these two uh, shows how the target domain arises out of our initial domain. The right figure here shows the convergence history of the gradient method compared to three BFGS methods. We stored all gradients in memory, five gradients in memory, and two gradients in memory. And you can see that there is no really a difference between these two methods. So we can summarize that um, our BFGS method is superior to the gradient method and that we observe superlinear convergence of our limited BFGS method. Moreover, it was successful with very few gradients in memory. To the conclusion, the first part of this talk was about the Lagrange-Newton approach. I present the Riemannian SQP method and illustrate it for a Poisson type interface problem for which we could observe quadratic convergence rates on the finest grid. The second part of this talk was about the quasi-Newton approach. I present the Riemannian limited BFGS method and illustrate it for a parabolic interface problem. This, uh, for this, uh, we could observe superlinear convergence rates. Uh, our results um, led us to the question, what happens if we optimize only pieces of a shape? We tried this, but the shape deformation led us to shapes where uh, normal vectors could no longer evaluate it. And this uh, led us to the question, how can we con uh, optimize only domains with Lipschitz boundaries. Um, then we got the idea to use the domain expression of the shape derivative, um, because we do not need uh, normal vectors then. We done this in this new publication, but the uh, usage of the domain expression of the shape derivative required a new definition of the shape manifold. So we introduced a new shape manifold in this uh, publication and the next step of our research is to analyze this shape manifold. Here are some references. Okay, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you for the talk. Um, so this is quite far from uh, the things that I do, so maybe a naive question. As you iterate, the, the boundary uh, evolves, and then you have to, I suppose, resolve part of the, the PDEs. Um, does that mean that you have to remesh both sides of the boundary every time? Yeah. Is that an issue, or is it actually quite fast? Uh, we yeah, it's fast. We make it with the lin linear elasticity equation, and so the mesh is deformed yeah, in oh, each okay, iteration. So it can evolve with a warm start. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? I have one. Uh, so your work for the moment, uh, if I understand well, is for 2D domains, and so you have one-dimensional uh, boundaries, interfaces mm -hmm. between the domains. A any plan to go for 3D and so for surfaces that would, would need to optimize? Yeah, we are uh, done it for uh, higher dimensions also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it very different, for example, the shape metrics that you mentioned? Uh, is yeah, it transferable to higher dimensions? Yeah, the shape, uh, the Sobolev metric uh, could be um, um, extended. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, extended for higher dimensions. Uh, then the definition looks uh, very different. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, it is done by Michel and Mumford also. Yeah. You make it for two dimensions and for uh, sub manifolds. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so let us thank the speaker again.